Hello, I'm Alan Jong, and in this video I'd like to give you a very quick demonstration of a software application called JMAP, which uh, can be used to create uh, causal diagrams and also enables uh, you to compare, uh, say for example, an instructor's diagram to that of a student's diagram or a collective group of students produced uh, by a collective group of students. Uh, when you log in, uh, what you need to do then is list your variables in the My Matrix sheet uh, in this column here. And then once you have all the variables entered, you click Add Factors to the Map. So uh, first thing you need to do is create your instructor's map by arranging the nodes to convey uh, you, your beliefs as to how these variables affect one another. So let's just say, for example, we think this variable affects this variable. What you then do is select the node that you want an outgoing arrow to uh, point from. And if you want an arrow that points to the right, click the right arrow here. And then place your cursor on the white circle to link uh, it to the uh, affected variable. And you can do the same thing like so, and so forth. Now, one of the things about this program is that you can also specify variables that have inverse relationships, or say negative correlations, as opposed to uh, causal uh, relationships that are positively related. That is, for every unit increase in this variable, you see uh, uh, say unit increase in this variable, whereas every unit increase in this variable leads to one unit decrease in this variable. Then we can also specify the relative strength of the impact from low impact, medium impact, to high impact. That is, for every unit, one unit change in this variable, a high impact would suggest that its effect would lead to, say, 10 uh, increases in value, 10 unit increases. Uh, low impact could then use to represent, uh, say, every unit increase in this variable leads to, say, only 0 0.10 unit increase in this variable, and so forth. Now, a solid link would suggest that, will convey that for every time this variable changes, leads to a change in this variable. But if it happens, say, most of the time, but not all of the time, you can click the dotted lines like so. And let's say if it rarely ever impacts it, say, only some of the time it happens, or it's not, it's like, not very likely to happen, you can click the low contingency uh, <coughs> attribute. So uh, then finally, uh, you can then also click here, cl click Control R, or click the Comment button to explain why you think variable A affects variable B. And uh, if you want, you can return and you can edit your explanations at any time. Now, note that all of these, all this information is stored here in my matrix. So we have uh, high impact with low contingency, and then the comments are then stored in comment boxes within the matrix. Okay, so once you're done with the map, um, we can then save it. Students will do, perform the same function, and will save their maps. And uh, let's take a look at the completed causal map. In this case here, we have uh, eight students' maps, and let's say this is the here. What we see here is the completed instructor's map. Okay, and. Uh, what we can then do is go to the map index 
and let me just show you quickly how to download the students maps into uh, this program here and let's say again we don't have any maps to start with so we click download and all the matrices from the students maps will be copied and pasted into this jmap file and then we can also specify which links match those of the instructors links causal links based on uh, let's just say impact value so the green represents uh, shared links and so forth uh, all right so now that we downloaded them we can then go to the compare map screen click the compare button and let's compare them on impact values and uh, what we see here now is that we're comparing the instructor's map to student one's map and the green links specify uh, the links that are shared between the instructors and the student's map and then the gray links show or identify the links that are in the instructor's map but are missing in the student's map. So down here we can then get some quantitative measures that tells us that of the 12 links in the instructor's map the student was able to recognize or identify only seven of them correctly. Now the dark green arrows tell us that the impact values that the student assigned to these links also match the impact values assigned by the instructor as high impact. Now here the, the instructor assigned it medium or moderate impact but the student did not. Light green therefore specifies links that are shared but differ in the, impact, the assigned impact values. And so the uh, statistics or the numbers, hard numbers that that is shown here there were three links that matched on impact value and four links that were also shared but did not match on impact values. And finally, the program gives you a quick percentage of the number of links that the students were able to correctly uh, identify in their maps. So you can go on and then compare it to student two, student three, and you can scroll to the right to access the remaining maps. So you can also envision that if a student one had produced uh, a map at time one, time two, and time three, you could then scroll through here and visually see to what extent the student's map is converging towards that of the instructor's map over time. Now we can also use the shortcut keys, control H, control J, control K, to quickly uh, navigate and animate these maps. Control G, or control L will then allow you to scroll back and forth. You can then also contr click control Y, U, and I to see the matrices if you prefer to look at them in that format. Or at any point in time, if you're looking at a particular map, you can collect, click control Z and you can look at the student's map. And then control W will close that and bring you back to uh, JMAP. Okay, now one more feature I would like to show you is what if we want to look at how all the eight, eight students collectively are performing uh, as a group. So what you can do is go to the map index sheet and aggregate. Select all the maps and then aggregate them into a matrix which I will just say called G1. And again we we'll want to highlight them based on the impact attribute. So now it's going to go through all eight students' matrices and compile the, let's see, compile uh, some statistics. For example, this here, this matrix here tells me that 80%, 88% of the maps uh, uh, contained the, the link pointing from discriminus stimulus 1 to the undesired behavior 1 versus 50 percent and so forth and let's say we want to set a criterion value we'll be very liberal let's just say 
point to all the links that are observed in at least 25% or more of the students' maps, and then it'll highlight those. Uh, so now that we've aggregated it, we can now go back to uh, my map and if we scroll to, to the very end, we will now be able to compare or superimpose the instructor's map over the map or the collective uh, maps of all eight students. And of course in this case um, we were very liberal. Uh, we said uh, we accepted uh, all the links that were observed in at least two or more students. That's it's only 25% of that. And so what we see, of course, is that over that, uh, based on that criterion, as a group, they all, they were all able to uh, identify the links uh, that are noted or included in the instructor's map. So uh, let's see now. Let's say another option here is you, if, if when we're viewing an aggregated uh, set of maps like G1, you can also click on percent shared. And what you see here is now that links that convey what percentage of the students' maps contain each link. So the wider the link conveys the lar a larger percentage of shared links across the eight student maps. Uh, whereas a narrow uh, arrow tells me that um, a small percentage of the eight students uh, produced a map that contained this particular link. And then let's say uh, one more uh, uh, tool that I can show you here is that you can click the high scores button and it'll, what it'll do is compile uh, and score each student's map uh, according to the number of links that match in direction, impact, and the contingency, uh, the number of links shared between that student's map and the instructor's map, and the links not shared, to compute sort of a score, and then it automatically ranks order the students based on this aggregate score to get a sense of uh, which students produce the best maps as well as which students produce uh, the worst maps. So there is a quick overview, and if you like to play with JMAP or learn some more about some of its functions, you can go to my website, uh, cscl.wikispaces.com slash JMAP, or at any time, go to my website at myweb.fsu slash ajong, and there you'll be able to find a link to JMAP.